Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to Trader .com. Uh, nightly update. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, if you go back to uh, the weekend video, um, I recorded the video Saturday morning. If you know anything about me, um, I don't watch the news. I really don't. Um, if it's if it's not on Twitter in the middle of the day, in the middle of the work week, I just I just don't watch the news. I'm one of the very few people who don't watch the evening news. It's, it's just all depressing. So um, I had no idea. I don't, I don't even think the news was even out uh, when I when I recorded the video on the weekend about, obviously everybody knows about this now, about the horrific events in, um, you know, the, the whole the whole Middle East, countless years of debacle with Palestine and Israel and back and forth and back and forth. And just really, uh, just, you know, through, through centuries and centuries, how people just uh, cannot uh, get along. I'm not gonna go into the dynamics of uh, what is going on. Obviously, everybody by now knows the details. Um, I am, um, I'm in the camp for peace, okay? I believe every single person uh, walking the earth has the right to live life uh, without fear, uh, without, um, you know, without persecution, uh, and just be happy and healthy. And, you know, my heart goes out to all sides, right? All sides of, um, you know, what's going on, all sides everywhere, just human beings in general. I'm a, I'm, I'm, uh, I believe in society. I believe in happiness and unfortunately uh through generations and generations we just you know as human beings we just can't get along and that's unfortunate it's gonna be like this till the, the, the end of time but again uh we're not here to talk about politics um i just wish everybody happiness as, and if you've been watching these videos for years that's all about been my message i wish everybody health and happiness and hopefully everybody uh can eventually uh, be you know at peace with themselves and peace with others, but that's not the case. So let's talk about the society part of the stock market. Um, if you were under a rock like me, right, and you slept through all of the weekend and you didn't know what was going on, you looked at the market today from face value, and that's exactly what we talked about over the weekend from face value. That the Nasdaq kind of going back into last week had an engulfing candle on Friday that took out basically about two and a half weeks uh, worth of selling, and we reclaimed the 363 level. Now, let's pretend you've, you, you don't know what's going on in the Middle East. There is no you know, macro news going on. Today, the Dow and the market, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ all opened up about half of a percent, six-tenths of a percent lower, which is not a big deal considering how big the engulfing candle was. Now, granted, there was incredible geopolitical news. Again, this is a very fluid situation. We still don't know how it's going to end. We still don't know the full ramification what this is going to lead to. Uh, if you looked at uh, the, the stats on a lot of the commodity names uh, today, you had a lot of big things happening. You had oil uh, surging, as you could possibly imagine, right? Not, you know, not exactly the greatest thing to be short all overnight. You had oil rise 4%. You had um, you had gold prices right 1%. You had um, uh, uh, defense names uh, going crazy. You had energy oil stocks obviously going crazy. And the NASDAQ just wasn't down. It wasn't down a lot. It was down six tenths of a percent. And slowly but surely, stocks started getting stronger. And we were just in a situation that an inside day playing out. So let's look at the, you know, without looking at everything from an emotional point of view, let's talk about things from a logical facts point of view, okay? Obviously, we know uh, the horrific events happened this weekend that are still going on. Ma you know, massive, you know, mass numbers of people are losing their lives, which is horrible, okay? I don't care who it is, what race, what religion, it's horrible for another human being to die, okay? Um, before it's time naturally, okay? Accidents happen, this thing happens, but I, again, I, I believe in life, I believe in happiness. But let's look at the, you know, let's look at the data today, okay? We always talk about, uh, talk about data. Today, uh, the bond market was closed. The banks were closed. And that le led to about 20% of average true volume on the NASDAQ to be lower, okay? When we had the market pre-market and we had the market in the middle of the day, there was no panic, okay? There was no volatility. There was no uh, 
tremendous wave of option bets one way or another. So what does that tell me? Okay, that tells me is people are sitting on the sidelines um, and kind of trying to interpret, right? Trying to interpret what's going on, what potentially going on. We still don't even know how the United States is going to fully react. We don't understand. We don't know the moving parts. So this is going to be, um, you know, this is going to be a very fluid situation playing out. And the thing is, with the, because the market was so strong on Friday and because this candle engulfed two and a half weeks worth of selling, eventually traders almost in a weird way got numb to the news. Okay, they got really numb to the news and they started buying stocks. And slowly but surely, you started seeing the market leaders get stronger. Microsoft, right? And Meta and Apple, right? Apple and Netflix, right? These were all stocks that were moving up. So if you didn't know the market was having going through uh, this crazy amount of spin cycle within 24 hours, you would just think, hey, the market opened up lower. It was an inside day. And you know what? The market looks absolutely great. And that's exactly where we start today, right? We start the day, uh, NASDAQ closed up 53 points, took out the previous channel's high, and now is within striking distance of reclaiming the 50-day moving average, right? Right, guys? Always remember, above the 50-day is bullish, below the 50-day is bearish. Look at the last time we reclaimed the 50-day moving average. The Qs literally went, you know, literally went from 75 uh, 75 to 81 in three sessions, okay? We are a couple of bucks away from reclaiming the 50-day moving average. That's kind of a big deal, okay? That is really, really a big deal. And the one thing that, you know, the one thing that Wall Street does have is a very long memory. If you guys remember, when Russia invaded the Ukraine, the market was down one or two days, and then slowly but surely, everybody became numb to it. It was just part of everyday life. Unfortunately, but it became part of everyday life. And slowly but surely, you see headlines every day on the Ukraine and this, that, and the other thing. I don't want to say no, nobody cares, but everybody's so numb to it, it doesn't even affect their thinking, and it doesn't even affect the natural cost of the stock market. And that's exactly where I think eventually, okay, eventually uh, this uh, latest rounds of violence and murder and all that stuff, all that bad stuff that nobody wants to hear, nobody wants to live through, is on the table eventually and unfortunately everybody's going to become numb to that as well and eventually we're going to look go back to our everyday um you know uh, everyday routines uh everyday life and unfortunately millions and millions of people around the world are going to have an opinion are going to have a stance one way or another our jobs as individuals is take care of ourselves right Look at yourself in the mirror. Try to be the best version of yourself. Good person, kind-hearted, smile, sweet. It's okay. It's okay to be nice to somebody that's not like you. It's okay to be nice to somebody that's not the same religion, not the same uh, nationalities. It's okay. Okay, that's what makes the world supposedly great, that everybody could come together. It's not the case, but that's, but that's exactly what we're talking about. And as traders... We're looking at the big picture, right? But at the same time, we're paying attention to what the market is telling us. So if it took two, three, four days for the Ukraine-Russia situation to kind of die down and the market to start trading organically, well, so far, it's taking us basically 12 hours. And, you know, depending, and obviously, anything could happen tomorrow. That's obvious. Anything could really happen tomorrow. But the point is, the fact that the bulls really held their ground today and even price improved above Friday's magnificent engulfing channel, that's a bullish thing. Again, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in the market. We never know, right? This is such a fluid event. God knows what, it, what could potentially happen. But when you look at the leaders, and that's the most important part, it's not like the secondary, the third tier stocks were running up. These are market leaders, Apple, Meta, right? Apple, Meta, uh, Microsoft, Apple, Google, all in the green, and now we're very, very close to getting above the 50-day moving average. Um, normally, I would turn around and say, if we could get a close tomorrow above the 50-day, risk is back on. You can go long with no problem. But the fact is, we have this big, big, you know, big matzo ball staring us in the face with this whole Middle East debacle that it's going to be very super hard uh, to be long anything overnight because at any moment, something crazy could happen. And knowing that something crazy has happened, uh, this kind of changes the, the potential near-term dynamics. 
Will it have an effect on intraday trading? And probably not, especially in the first three, four hours. But the fact that we saw a lack of volatility today, okay, which was the most important part, lack of volatility really, you know, shows you that the bulls, at least for the intermediate term, made a stand on Friday, price improved today, and now we are a day or so away for potentially reclaiming a big supply zone, which is the 50-day moving average. And here's the price, guys. Any close above the Qs, above 368, right? Literally any close uh, above 368, uh, we could be looking at really good prices. And if we could continue to negate, uh, if we could continue to negate bad news, especially macro geopolitical bad news, boy, oh boy, this market does have a shot uh, to really go nuts. And if you look at the pivots today, you know, we had, you know, we talked about names uh, on the weekend update, all these, you know, all these uh, cybersecurity stocks went nuts. You guys remember we were talking about crowdsource uh, over the weekend, you know, crowdsource went absolutely nuts. All these, all these, uh, you know, all these, um, uh, all these hacking and cybersecurity companies, Pan W, crowdsource, uh, NET, ZS, uh, they had really, really strong days. Anything with AI started getting a little bit better as well. So the stage is set to tomorrow, okay? Um, I kind of was more of a market watcher today than anything else. Um, not really happy. I came in long, uh, just a runner, just a runner on NVIDIA. And I went from being up uh, five bucks in the trade to being down like six bucks in the trade. Obviously wasn't happy about that. Uh, I had some cues as a hedge because I always, you know, again, if you watched uh, any of the PS60 workshops, we talk about proper early hedging again. Uh, so I made about three bucks on the queues, but I lost on my runner, about six bucks on my runner. So that wasn't great. But I really, really liked the way the market held up, uh, especially names that continue to have, you know, not so great news. I love the way uh, Tesla held up today. I love the way NVIDIA, despite, you know, despite having, you know, a big, uh, a big gap down today, you know, reclaim back the 50-day moving average onto the close. So we're still very, very close to having these major moves. So if, if there is a potential for the market to go higher and we do have a scenario that the Qs reclaim back that 368 level, all these things could wake up, guys. For the next couple of days, watch the video above Friday's channels. Watch, uh, watch Tesla, right? Watch Tesla above last week's highs. Look at Apple. Apple is, look how close this is to reclaiming the 50-day moving average on Apple. Look how close Microsoft is to reclaiming supply. Look at Meta. Meta's has been going bonkers. Look how close Meta is. It's not even that far off uh, earnings highs. So we are set up, folks. We are really, really set up. Look at AMD, right? Look at AMD. AMD had a monster move on Friday, reclaimed the 50-day moving average inside day, watch this thing tomorrow. So I think the next tw 24 hours or so is going to be very, very important. Uh, if the market doesn't get rattled for potential, any new headlines, God forbid, anything really dr dramatic that comes out of the Middle East, and we could shake off continued weakness, that I think eventually we will reclaim back the 50-day moving average, and there is a potential that we could have a fourth quarter rally. Guys, I got to cut this a little bit uh, a little bit early, I got to take my what, one of my kids uh, to basketball practice. Guys, if you are planning to join us in the live webinar, come aboard, man. There's 30 days. Take the trial. Uh, it's in the con it's in the link in the comments. Test try drive these pivots. It might not be for you. Okay, I'm not. I, if you have a $500 account, 100% this is not for you. Okay, I, I, I give you my my word. You, there's plenty of small cap challenges that you could take on on social media. Okay. Uh, but if you are serious about pivots and, and developing your career, it's a very cool way of looking at the market. There's nothing random. Everything is very specific in nature. Stocks trade from supply to supply. When stocks take out supply, stocks will higher. When stocks take out demand, they go lower. And if, if you are a serious trader and you love technical analysis or like it enough to try something that you haven't seen before, I think the webinar could be uh, right up your alley. So that's it for everybody. Have a great day wonderful day. I hope everybody, I wish everybody, like we say every single time, nothing but love and happiness and health and everything else falls into place. Guys, God bless. Stay happy, be kind, and I'll see you guys with God's help tomorrow.